Voices of Today presents The Gospel of the Lord An early version which was circulated by Marcion of Sinope as the original gospel Translated from the Greek by Rev. James Hamlin Hill, M.A. Narrated by Dennis Daly Introduction Bering Gould and others have published translations of portions of Marcion's Gospel, which differed in the Greek from the corresponding parts of our third Gospel. But, so far as we are aware, there has been no complete English translation of the whole published hitherto. The present is an attempt to supply this deficiency. The translation has been made, except where otherwise stated in the notes, from the Greek version of Han, contained in the Codex Apocryphus of Thilo. The controversy, which has been carried on as to the relative value of this Gospel, and that attributed to St. Luke, and as to the nature of the connection, which so evidently exists between them, has been one of the most remarkable and interesting literary phenomena of the century, and has brought out clearly the power of modern criticism, as well as the ability and ingenuity of the critics. The theory that the passages of our third gospel, that were not in Marcion's gospel, were of much later origin, and by another author, found able supporters who refused to take for granted all that Tertullian, Epiphanius, and others had said, and by an exhaustive analysis of all the passages in either gospel, and all the testimony they could glean from antiquity, seemed to many to have established their contention. But Volkmar and others, by reconstructing the Marcionite gospel from the patristic testimony, and examining, from a doctrinal point of view, the larger and the smaller gospel, became convinced that portions had been cut out from the former. Since then, the eternal evidence of style and diction, examined with great ability by Dr. Sanday and others, proves beyond reasonable question that the whole of the third gospel was written by one and the same man. Not only peculiar words, but also remarkable phrases and idioms abound in the portions published by Marcion and are proportionately plentiful in all the passages of any size, which he did not use, both parts bearing, in this respect, a strong resemblance to the Acts of the Apostles, usually ascribed to the same author, but to no other part of the New Testament. Before considering his Gospel further, a brief account of Marcion's life may not be out of place. According to Tertullian, and others, he was the son of a bishop and was born at Sinope in Pontus. He was a rich shipmaster and arrived in Rome within two years either way of AD 140, bringing this gospel with him, not as a new gospel, but as that which St. Paul used, and which he communicated to the churches he founded. This Marcion called the Gospel of the Lord. In his early enthusiasm for the faith, Marcion bestowed a rich present upon the church at Rome, in which he aspired to the chief place, but he was afterwards excommunicated by it as a heretic. He died about AD 170. He was a man of an energetic character, but rough and eccentric, of a thoroughly practical tendency and with little speculative talent. He accepted heartily the conception of the free grace of God in Christ, but he looked upon the law and the gospel, which St. Paul regarded as brought into harmony by the pedagogical office of the law, as being purely hostile and irreconcilable. Shortly after his arrival in Rome, Serdo, the Syrian Gnostic, who had already distinguished between the good God of Christianity and the just God of Judaism, gained an influence over him. He subsequently developed for himself a system 
the dominating idea of which was the irreconcilable opposition of righteousness and grace, law and gospel, Judaism and Christianity. To him, the creator of the earth was the god of this world only, the Demiurge, and inferior to the god of the universe, who had sent his son to rescue mankind from subjection to the creator and his laws with their penalties. All the patriarchs and prophets belonged to the inferior God. Their prophecies did not relate to Jesus, but to a Messiah, whom the Creator purposed to send. Jesus suddenly appeared at Capernaum in human form on his divine mission, having had no human parents and no childhood. As a man he was crucified by the agents of the Creator, but rose again triumphant from the grave. Accordingly, Marcion repudiated the Old Testament, and he set forth the supposed opposition between the two Testaments in a special treatise entitled Antitheses. He ignored traditions of doctrine and practice, and rejected the principle of allegorical interpretation as it was applied by others to the Old Testament. He considered St. Paul the only true apostle all the others having relapsed into Judaism. He tried, in vain, to remodel the church at Rome in accordance with these views, and then set himself to establish an organized ecclesiastical system of his own, and succeeded so well, and had so many adherents, that by the fourth century, Marcionite congregations were to be found in Italy, Egypt, Palestine, Arabia, Syria, and even Persia. They appear to have outlasted all the Gnostic sects, and there were many still existing in the 7th century. No founder of any other sect imitated so closely the life and doctrine of the Catholic Church, and, possibly for that reason, none was so often and distinctly denounced by its members. All the services were conducted in the simplest forms. The catechumens might take part in all, and of the elect he required self-denial, the simplest diet, and abstinence from marriage. While others proposed to extend or complete the gospel, he claimed only to reproduce in its original simplicity the gospel of St. Paul. But as from the style of the writing it is evidently not that apostle's own composition, Marcion's testimony would agree with the idea that it was composed by some friend or companion of St. Paul, thus affording a strong confirmation of the opinion, which certainly prevailed in the church fifty years later, that it was written by St. Luke. Marcion's gospel was probably the one used by Serdo, since Tertullian says of him that he received St. Luke's Gospel only, and not the whole of that. Along with his Gospel, Marcion published ten of the epistles of St. Paul, and called the latter the Apostolicon. Together with his Gospel, they form the first canon of the New Testament on record. And this canon is often cited as evidence of the early existence of the writings contained in it, especially the written words of some of our Lord's miracles. It would appear that before that time, each Christian community had its books that were read in the services and practically constituted its canon. Most of these books were the same in nearly all the churches, but some were less widely known than others and some were looked upon as of doubtful authenticity. And no attempt had been made to establish, by common consent, a canon for general acceptance. Marcion's canon indicates the principles upon which the New Testament was formed. 1. St. Paul's writings were accepted as a final and decisive test of his teaching, and so with others. And 2. The whole collection of writings sanctioned by apostles was regarded as combining to convey all the different elements of Christianity. 
Such was the man who circulated the shorter gospel, which we are now considering, and such was his mode of procedure. Now taking it as established that the additional matter, nearly one third of the whole, contained in the larger gospel, was originally composed by the same author as the rest, though not necessarily at the same time as the rest, the question next arises. Did Marcion possess the gospel in its larger form when he issued the smaller? Was the third gospel in use in the churches of Pontus in the form in which we now have it when Marcion left that country for Rome? And did Marcion publish an abridged edition to suit his own views? Or was the church at Sinope possessed of a shorter version in which alone Marcion placed confidence? It cannot be said that this question has been answered with the same clearness and certainty as the other. The testimony of Tertullian, Epiphanius and Irenaeus cannot be taken as conclusive on this point. We can accept their statements as to the contents of those copies of Marcion's canon which came under their notice, though their copies were not alike, but not as to the motives of Marcion, or the sources from which he obtained what he published. For well, they certainly charged him with minor alterations, which were not of his making, as they are found in independent versions. The opinion that our third gospel passed through more than one edition, and was enlarged by its author, has gained strength of late years for reasons unconnected with Marcion or his Gospel. Now Marcion is charged with omitting portions of the epistles, and it seems probable that he did so, though only to a very slight extent, excepting in the epistle to the Romans, where the exact extent of these lacunae cannot be ascertained. And it is inferred from this that he cut out parts from the Gospel also, on the other hand, it is not proved that he altered any parts he published either in the epistles or in the gospel. The majority of the differences between his text and that now received being supported by one or more ancient manuscripts. These differences constitute various readings of the greatest interest, dating as they do to a time anterior to all other authorities in our possession. An indication that Marcion used an earlier recension will be found by comparing the 2nd and 13th verses of the 11th chapter. In verse 2, Marcion commenced the Lord's Prayer thus, Father, let thy Holy Spirit come upon us, making this the initial and principal petition. And then he closed the ensuing argument on the importance of prayer by saying in verse 13, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Here the connection is obvious. The disciples were to ask for the Holy Spirit and to infer that their heavenly Father would grant that good gift even more readily than an earthly father gave good gifts to his son. And not that only, but all the petitions of their prayer of which that alone is mentioned as the first and best. But in our third gospel, the Lord's Prayer contains no reference to the Holy Spirit, and that being so, the reference to him in verse 13, which is the same as in Marcion's gospel, is inappropriate, to say the least, and it would have been much more natural, for example, if verse 13 had read, give their daily bread to them that ask him. The explanation of the want of connection between verse 13 and the preceding prayer in our Gospel seems to be this. The common author of the whole, when he first composed the Gospel, referred to the Holy Spirit in both places, but in a later recension, finding that the Lord's Prayer of which, beyond question, there were several versions in early times, was becoming gradually accepted in the churches, or in other Gospels, or at Jerusalem, in a different form to that contained in its Gospel, altered it, 
but omitted to alter verse 13 to correspond with the new form of verse 2. And if so, is it not highly probable that it was written in its first form soon after St. Paul began to preach, and that the correction was made at the time of which he wrote? Fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem and communicated unto them that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles, etc. Galatians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 Certainly the absence of all allusion to the third person of the Blessed Trinity in the Lord's Prayer is very remarkable. From Marcion's Gospel we learn that there was a very early version of it in which the Holy Spirit was mentioned. Gregory of Nyssa had the same clause with the addition of the words and cleanse us but little weight was attached to a reading of so late a date. This is only one of many curious and interesting facts that may be ascertained from a careful study of this document. According to the pseudo Hippolytus and Dorotheus, C. Bering Gould, the first bishop of Sinope was Philologus, a personal friend of St. Paul. If so, how natural to suppose that he would possess a copy of that Apostle's Gospel in its first form. And even if this were not the case, it is quite conceivable that a copy of the first edition might be conveyed to Pontus and remain in use in that remote region, with or without other versions, long after it has been superseded elsewhere by the later and fuller edition. That Marcion may have preferred the shorter version both as the original one and as the one most in accord with his own views. We may assume that Marcion held his peculiar views sincerely and conscientiously, and we may argue inductively as to which hypothesis will most naturally explain how he came in the first instance to entertain such views. Is it more reasonable to suppose that Marcion's errors arose in part from his possessing an imperfect and incomplete account of the life and teaching of Jesus, and so, when he became acquainted with a fuller account, he preferred to reject as spurious the additional matter rather than abandon opinions inconsistent therewith that he had already formed and published, or to suppose that he had formed his opinions in direct opposition to the gospel he had been taught to believe and then excused himself by mutilating that book. Clearly the former furnishes the more natural explanation of the phenomena. It must be borne in mind that Marcion assigned as his reason for using his gospel that it was the oldest version, and there is nothing to show that he entirely rejected the other gospels or disputed their authorship. Assuming then that Marcion employed an early recension of St. Luke's Gospel, it is still open to us to suppose that he left out portions of it, and this seems to many to offer the best explanation of the actual facts, since some parts of our third Gospel that were not in Marcion's are such as he could not possibly accept, holding the views he did, while others, for example, the parable of the prodigal son, furnish from their contents no sufficient reason why Marcion should have cut them out. And on the other hand, as Tertullian and Epiphanius abundantly prove, many of the passages retained by Marcion are quite as hostile to his views as any that he is supposed to have excised. Perhaps future researchers may throw light on the question how much of the missing portions was absent also from the first edition of St. Luke. Amesbury, Wiltshire, August 1891 The Gospel of the Lord Chapter 1 In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being the governor of Judea, Jesus came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was in authority. 
And in the synagogue there was a man, which had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, Jesus? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him into the midst, he came out of him, having done him no hurt. And amazement came upon all, and they spake together, saying one to another, What is this word? For in authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And a rumour of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue, and entered into the house of Simon. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her, and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. And he came to Nazareth, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to speak unto them, and all wondered at the words which proceeded out of his mouth. And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this parable, Physician, heal thyself, whatsoever we have heard done at Capernaum, do also here. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine occurred throughout all the land. And unto none of them was Elijah sent, but only to Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel at the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. And they were all filled with wrath in the synagogue when they heard these things, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of a hill whereon their city was built, to cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. And when the sun was setting, all as many as had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them, and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed, and went into a desert place. And the multitude sought him, and came unto him, and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must announce as good tidings the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Chapter 2 Now it came to pass, that as a multitude pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them, and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down, and taught the multitudes out of the boat. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon, answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and taken nothing, but at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net was breaking. And they beckoned unto their partners in the other boat, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. 
When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For amazement overcame him, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And likewise also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt be taking men alive. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left all and followed him. And it came to pass, when he was in one of the cities, behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou cleansed. And immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he charged him to tell no man, But go and show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded, that this may be a testimony to you. But so much more went there a fame abroad of him, and many multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he himself was withdrawing in the wilderness and praying. And it came to pass on one of the days that he was teaching, and there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man that was palsied, and they sought to bring him in, and to lay him before them. And not finding what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up to the house top, and let him down through the tiles with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And seeing their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, perceiving their reasonings, answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins are forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk? For that ye may know that the Son of Man hath authority upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the palsied man, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his house, glorifying God. And amazement took hold on all, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. And after these things he went forth, and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the place of Toll. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his house. And there was a great company of publicans, and of others that were reclining with them. And their scribes and the Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often, and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees? But thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, Can ye make the sons of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them? For the days will come, and when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, then will they fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old garment, 
else both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old wineskins, else the new wine will burst the skins, and itself will be spilled, and the skins will perish. But new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. No man also, having drunk old wine straightway, desireth new, for he saith, The old is better. Chapter 3 And it came to pass, on the second Sabbath after the first, that he was going through the cornfields. And his disciples plucked the ears of corn, and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do ye that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day? And Jesus, answering them, said, Have ye not read even this what David did, when himself was anhungered, and they which were with him, how he went into the house of God, and did take and eat the showbread, and gave also to them that were with him, which it is not lawful to eat, but for the priests alone. And he said unto them, That the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath, that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man there, and his right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their reasonings, and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up, and stand forth in the midst. And he arose, and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you something. Is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good, or to do evil, to save life, or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored as the other. And they were filled with madness, and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mountain to pray, and was passing the whole night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and he chose from them twelve, whom also he named Apostles, Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also became a traitor, and he came down among them, and stood on a level place, and the multitude of his disciples, and a great number of the people, out of all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him, and to be healed of their diseases, and they that were troubled by unclean spirits. And they were healed, and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out of him, and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples, and said, Blessed are ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for, behold, your reward is great in heaven. For according to these things did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have your consolation in full. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. 
woe unto you, when all men shall speak well of you. For according to these things did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you which hear, Love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other, and from him that taketh away thy cloak, withhold not thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. As ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. And if ye love them which love you, what thanks have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thanks have ye? For sinners also do the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thanks have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive equal things. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be sons of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. And judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Release, and ye shall be released. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall they give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his teacher, but every one that is perfect shall be as his teacher. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! Cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. For there is no good tree that maketh corrupt fruit, nor corrupt tree that maketh good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For of thorns they do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Every one that cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man building a house, who digged and went deep, and laid a foundation on the rock. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and had not strength to shake it, for it was founded upon the rock. But he that heareth and doeth not, is like a man that, without a foundation, built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Chapter 4 Now when he had completed all his sayings in the ears of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion's servant was sick and going to die, and he was precious unto him. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him elders of the Jews, asking him that he would come and save his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him earnestly, 
saying, That he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us the synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my boy shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto this one, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard these things, he marvelled at him, and turned, and said unto the multitude that followed him, I say unto you, Not even in Israel have I found so great faith. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the sick servant whole. And it came to pass the day after, that he was going to a city called Nain. And many of his disciples were going with him, and a great multitude, now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable multitude of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And fear took hold on all, and they glorified God, saying, That a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumour of him went forth in the whole of Judea, and in all the region round about. And the disciples of John told him of all these things. And John, calling unto him a certain two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that cometh, or are we to look for another? And when the men were to come unto him, they said, John the Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that cometh, or are we to look for another? And in the same hour he cured many of infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many blind he gave sight. And Jesus, answering, said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good tidings announced to them, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What are ye come out into the wilderness to gaze at? A reed shaken with the wind? But what are ye come out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are in gorgeous apparel and delicacy are in king's courts. But what are ye come out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, a greater prophet than John the Baptist, there is none. But he that is less in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people, when they heard it, and the publicans, justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God unto themselves, being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children, sitting in the marketplace, and calling one to another, 
and saying, We piped unto you, and ye did not dance. We mourned to you, and ye did not weep. For John the Baptist is come, neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And ye say, He hath a demon. The Son of Man is come, eating and drinking. And ye say, Behold a gluttonous man, and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, and wisdom was justified of all her children. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that he was reclining in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wet his feet with the tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Teacher, say on. A certain moneylender had two debtors, the one owed five hundred denarii, and the other fifty. And when they had not wherewith to pay, he forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave the more. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Water for my feet thou gavest not, but she hath wetted my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. A kiss thou gavest me not, but she, since the time I came in, hath not ceased kissing my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. For the sake of which I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that were reclining with him began to say among themselves, Who is this that even forgiveth sins? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Chapter 5 and it came to pass afterward that he made his way through city and village, preaching and announcing as good tidings the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their possessions. And when a great multitude were coming together, and they of every city were come to him, he spake by a parable. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the heaven devoured it, and other fell upon the rock, and when sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. Another fell in the midst of the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. And other fell on the good ground, and when sprung up, it made fruit a hundredfold. And when he said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. 
Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word from their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. Those on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns, these are they which, when they have heard, go, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that, on the good ground, these are, whoever in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep hold of it, and bring forth fruit in patience. No man, when he hath lighted a lamp, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a lampstand, that they which enter in may see the light. For there is no secret thing that shall not be made manifest, nor hidden that shall not be known and come into view. Take heed therefore how ye hear, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, even what he seemeth to have shall be taken away from him. And it was told him by certain, which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, Who is my mother and my brethren? My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God, and do it. Now it came to pass on one of the days that he went into a boat, and his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. They launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filling with water, and were in jeopardy. And they came to him, and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they were frightened and wondered, saying one to another, Who then is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. And they sailed down to the country of the Gadarenes which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had demons long time, and wore no cloak, neither abode in a house, but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was guarded and bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands asunder, and was driven of the demon into the deserts. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion because many demons were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. And there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the demons out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled, and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, and found the man from whom the demons were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also which saw it told by what means he that was possessed of the demons was saved. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about asked him to depart from them, for they were holden with great fear, 
and he entered into the boat and returned back again. Now the man, from whom the demons were departed, besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine house, and recount how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, publishing throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus returned, the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man whose name was Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet, and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. And a woman, having an issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived that power had gone out of me. When the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what reason she touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath saved thee, go into peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the teacher. For when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be saved. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all were weeping and bewailing her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out, and took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she rose straightway. And he commanded that something be given her to eat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them to tell no man what was done. Chapter 6 Then he called his twelve disciples together, and gave them power and authority over all the demons, and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves, nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece, and whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off even the dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed, and went through the villages in order, announcing the good tidings, and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by him, and he was much perplexed, because it was said by some that John was risen from the dead, and by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that a prophet, one of the original ones, was risen again. And Herod said, John I beheaded, but who is this, about whom I hear such things? And he sought to see him. And the apostles returned, and declared unto him what things they had done. And he took them, and went aside privately into a desert place of a city called Bethsaida. But the multitudes perceived it, and followed him, 
And he received them, and spake unto them about the kingdom of God, and healed them that had need of healing. And the day began to decline, and the twelve came, and said unto him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and country round about, and lodge, and find victuals. For here we are in a desert place. But he said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said, We have not more than five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy food for all this people. For there are about five thousand men. And he said to his disciples, Make them recline in companies by fifties. And they did so, and made them all recline. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and, looking up to heaven, he blessed them, and brake, and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they did eat, and were all filled, and there was taken up that which remained over to them of broken pieces, twelve baskets. And it came to pass, as he was praying alone, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, who do the multitudes say that I am? And they answering said, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah, and others say that some prophet of the original ones is risen again. And he said unto them, But who do ye say that I am? And Peter answering said, The Christ of God. And he charged them, and commanded them to tell no man this thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be slain, and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, If any man wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose or forfeit his own self? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some of those that stand here that shall by no means taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. And it came to pass, about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. And it came to pass, as he prayed, the appearance of his countenance was different, and his raiment white, flashing like lightning. And behold, there stood with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, seen in his glory. Now Peter and they that were with him were weighed down with sleep. But when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. But while he said these things, there came a cloud, and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice came, Jesus was found alone. And they were silent, and told no man in those days any of the things which they had seen. And it came to pass on the next day, when they came down from the mountain, a great multitude met him. And behold, a man from the multitude cried out, saying, Teacher, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only begotten. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it convulseth him with foam, and bruising him, hardly departeth from him. And I besought thy disciples that they should cast it out, and they could not. 
And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet coming, the demon rent him and convulsed him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, and healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the majesty of God. And as they all wondered at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, Take ye into your ears these sayings, for the Son of Man is going to be delivered up into the hands of men. But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them that they should not perceive it, and they feared to ask him about this saying. And there rose a reasoning among them, namely, who should be the greater of them? And Jesus, perceiving the reasoning of their heart, took a child, and set it by himself, and said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me, for he that is less among you all, the same shall be great. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out the demons in thy name, and we hindered him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Hinder him not, for he that is not against you is for you. And it came to pass, when the days of his taking up were being fulfilled, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and sent messages before his face. And they went, and entered into a village of the Samaritans, so as to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as going to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them, and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man came not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went into another village. And it came to pass, that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto Jesus, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the heaven have lodging places but the Son of Man hath not where he may lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead, but go thou and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but first suffer me to bid them farewell, which are at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand on the plough, and looking at the things behind, is fit for the kingdom of God. Chapter 7 And after these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them, two and two, before his face, into every city and place, whither he himself was about to come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the labourers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he may send forth labourers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, nor wallet, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. But if not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking the things with them for the labourer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, 
eat the things set before you, and heal the sick therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go out into the streets thereof, and say, Even the very dust of your city, which clave to us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, know this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom, than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the powers had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, shalt thou be exalted to the heaven? Thou shalt be thrusted down unto Hades. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despiseth you despiseth me, and he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. And the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us in thy name. And he said unto them, I behold Satan as lightning fallen from the heaven. Behold, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in the heavens. In that hour Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit, and said, I thank thee, Lord of the heaven, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it was well pleasing before thee. All things were delivered to me by my Father, and no man knoweth who the Father is but the Son, and who the Son is but the Father, and he to whomsoever the Son wishes to reveal him. And he turned him unto the disciples, and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see what ye see. For I tell you, that the prophets did not see what ye see. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up, and tempted him, saying, Teacher, doing what shall I obtain life? But he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he, answering, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God from all thy heart, and from all thy soul, and from all thy strength, and from all thy mind, and thy neighbour as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, This do, and thou shalt live. But he, wishing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbour? And Jesus replying said, a certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which both stripped him, and beat him, and departed, leaving him just half dead. And by chance, a certain priest was going down in that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and saw him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came down to him, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two denarii, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, 
and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come up again, I will repay thee. Now which of these three seems to thee to have been the neighbour of him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Jesus therefore said unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet, and heard his word. But Martha was distracted about much serving, and came up to him, and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister did leave me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art anxious, and troubled about many things. But there is need of one, and Mary chose the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Chapter 8 And it came to pass, whilst he was in a certain place, praying to the Father, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Father, let thy Holy Spirit come upon us. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our bread for the coming day. And forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And bring us not into temptation. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, since my friend is come to me from a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, even if he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. But of which of you that is a father shall his son ask a loaf, and he will give him a stone, or a fish, and he, instead of a fish, will give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father from heaven give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And he was casting out a demon, and it was dumb. And it came to pass, when the demon was gone out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, He casteth out the demons in Beelzebub, the chief of the demons. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. And if Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom be established? Because ye say that I cast out the demons in Beelzebub, and if I, in Beelzebub cast out the demons, in whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I, in the finger of God, cast out the demons, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. When the strong man, fully armed, keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. For when the stronger than he shall come upon him, 
and overcome him, he taketh from him his whole armour whereon he trusted, and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out from the man, he goeth through waterless places, seeking rest, and, finding none, he saith, I will return into my house whence I came out, and when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man becometh worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he said these things, a certain woman out of the multitude lifted up her voice, and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the breasts which thou didst suck. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God, and keep it. And when the multitudes were gathering thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. It seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it. No man, when he hath lighted a lamp, putteth it into a secret place, neither under the bushel, but on the lampstand, that they which come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when it is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Look therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If therefore thy whole body be full of light, having no part dark, it shall be wholly full of light, as when the lamp with its gleam doth give thee light. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee asked him to breakfast with him, and he went in and lay down. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marvelled that he had not first washed before the breakfast. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inside is full of extortion and wickedness. Foolish ones, did not he that made the outside make the inside also? But give us alms the things in your power, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and every herb, and pass over the calling and the love of God. But these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the first seat in the synagogues and the greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them know it not. Then one of the lawyers, answering, saith unto him, Teacher, saying these things, thou reproachest us also. And he said, Woe unto you also, lawyers, for ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, but your fathers killed them. Truly ye are witnesses, and consent to the deeds of your fathers. For they indeed killed them, but ye build their sepulchres. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye took away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not into yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to press upon him vehemently, and to provoke him to speak of more things, lying wait for him, and seeking to catch something out of his mouth, that they might accuse him. Chapter 9 In the meantime, when there were gathered together tens of thousands of the multitudes, insomuch that they trod one upon another, 
he began to say unto his disciples, First be on your guard against the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered up that shall not be revealed, and hidden that shall not be known. Wherefore, whatsoever ye have said in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken to the ear in the chambers shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after this have not power to do anything further. But I will show you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath authority to cast into Gehenna. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. But I say unto you, whosoever shall confess in me before men, in him shall the Son of Man also confess before God. But he that denieth me in the sight of men shall be denied in the sight of God. And every one who shall speak a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven. When they bring you up before the synagogues, and unto rulers and authorities, be not anxious how or what ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Spirit shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And one out of the multitude said unto him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who appointed me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and guard yourselves from covetousness, for not in a man's abundance consisteth his life out of his possessions. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he reasoned within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have not where to collect my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns, and build greater. And there will I collect all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast many goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Foolish one, this night they require thy soul from thee, and the things which thou hast prepared, whose shall they be? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Be not anxious for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than the food, and the body more than the raiment. Consider the ravens, that they sow not, nor reap, which have not store chamber, nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much rather do ye excel the birds? And which of you, with being anxious, can add to his stature one cubit? And if ye then be not able to do even a very little thing, why are ye anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, nor spin. Yet I say unto you, not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed like one of these. But if God doth so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more shall he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek ye not what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, but your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Notwithstanding seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for your Father is well pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, and give alms. 
Make yourself purses which grow not old, an unfailing treasure in the heavens, where a thief does not come near, nor a moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins stand girded about, and your lamps burning, and ye like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he shall return from the wedding feast that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them recline to meet, and shall pass by and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, and come in the third watch, and find them so, Blessed are those servants. But this know, that if the master of the house had known in what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched, and not have left his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for in an hour that ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. But Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us? or even unto all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall set over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant shall say, in his heart, my Lord delayeth to come, and shall begin to beat the men servants and the maid servants, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he expecteth not, and at an hour when he knoweth not, and will cut him asunder, and appoint his portion with the unfaithful. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For to whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom they have committed much, of him they will ask the more. I have come to cast fire on the earth, and what will I, if it be already kindled. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I constrained till it be accomplished? Think ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you, nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. They shall be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against a daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the multitudes, When ye see the cloud rising up from the west, straightway ye say, There cometh a shower, and so it cometh to pass. And when ye see a south wind blowing, ye say, There will be scorching heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye know how to interpret the face of the earth and the heavens, but how is it that ye do not interpret this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? For as thou goest with thine adversary before the magistrate, on the way give diligence to be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the exactor, and the exactor cast thee into prison. I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the very last lepton. Chapter 10 and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath days. And behold, there was a woman 
which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered, being vexed, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the multitude, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the day of the Sabbath. The Lord therefore answered him, and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the manger, and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these eighteen years, to have been loosed from this bond on the day of the Sabbath? And as he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were being done by him. And he said, Unto what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I liken it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his own garden. And it grew and became a great tree, and the birds of the heaven lodged in the branches of it. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three sata of meal, till the whole was leavened. And he went on through cities and villages, teaching, and making a journey unto Jerusalem. And one said unto him, Lord, are they few that are being saved? But he said unto them, Strive to enter in through the narrow gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We did eat and drink in thy presence, and thou didst teach in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of unrighteousness. There shall be the weeping and the gnashing of the teeth, when ye shall see all the righteous in the kingdom of God, and yourselves thrust out and held back outside. Chapter 11 And it came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees, to eat bread on a Sabbath day, that they were watching him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answered and spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? But they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And he answered and said unto them, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into the well, and will not straightway pull him up on the day of the Sabbath? And they could not answer him again to these things. And he said also to him that bade him, When thou makest a breakfast or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbours, lest they also bid thee again and a recompense be made thee. For when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they have not wherewith to recompense thee, for it shall be recompensed to thee in the resurrection of the righteous. And when one of them that reclined with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said unto him, 
A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they, all with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, hold me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, hold me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And that servant came and reported to his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed, and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou didst command, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that no one of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man cometh to me, and doth not abandon his own father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come behind me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have the things for completion? Lest, haply, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish, all that behold begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king, when he is going to encounter another king in war, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able, with ten thousand, to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an embassy, and desireth conditions of peace. So therefore, whosoever he be of you, that renounceth not all his possessions, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have become insipid, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is fit neither for the land, nor for the dunghill. They cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Chapter 12 Now all the publicans and sinners were coming near unto him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes kept murmuring, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake unto them this parable, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, and having lost one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh into the house, he calleth together his friends and neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say unto you, that likewise there shall be joy in the heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine righteous persons, which have no need of repentance. Either what woman, having ten drachmas, if she lose one drachma, doth not light a lamp and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it? When she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the drachma which I lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of God over one sinner that repenteth. Chapter 13 
And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him as wasting his property. And he called him, and said unto him, What is this that I hear of thee? Render the account of thy stewardship, for thou canst not be steward any longer. But the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I have not strength to dig, to beg I am ashamed. I know what I will do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called each one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, A hundred baths of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bond, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, And hundred cores of wheat. And he saith unto him, Take thy bond, and write fourscore. And his lord commended the steward of unrighteousness, because he did wisely. For the sons of this age are unto their own generation wiser beyond the children of the light. And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends out of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye leave, they may receive you into eternal habitations. He that is faithful in a very little is faithful in much, and he that is unrighteous in a very little is unrighteous also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will entrust to you the real mammon? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is mine? No domestic can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they sneered at him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which make yourselves righteous in the sight of men. But God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. From that time the kingdom of God is announced as good tidings, and every man forceth into it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away, even as the law and the prophets have passed away, than for one tittle of my words to fail. Every one that putteth away his wife and marrieth another, committeth adultery. And every one that marrieth one that is put away from a husband, committeth adultery. There was a certain rich man, and he was clothed in purple and fine linen, faring sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed from the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. But even the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and that he was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham from afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art in anguish. And besides all these things, between you and us there is a great gulf fixed, so that they that wish to cross from hence to you may not be able, 
neither may those from thence pass through to us. But he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. But he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one from the dead went unto them, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, not even if one from the dead arose, will they be persuaded. Chapter 14 Then said he unto the disciples, It is inconceivable but that occasions of stumbling will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were a gain for him if he had not been born, or if a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea, rather than that he should cause one of these little ones to stumble. Take heed to yourselves, but if thy brother sin against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he sin against thee seven times in the day, and seven times in the day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye would say unto this mulberry tree, Be thou uprooted, and be thou planted in the sea, and it would have obeyed you. But who is there of you, having a servant ploughing, or keeping sheep, that will say unto him, when he has come in from the field, Come straightway, and lie down to meat, and will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant, because he did the things were commanded him? I think not. So likewise do ye, when ye have done all the things that are commanded you. And it came to pass, as he was going to Jerusalem, that he was passing through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they raised a cry, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass, that as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorifying God, and fell down on his face, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus, answering, said, Were not the ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there none found that returned to give glory to God but this alien? And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was healed but only Naaman the Syrian. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath saved thee. And when he was questioned by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God cometh, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there, for lo, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come, when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, Lo here, or lo there, go not away, nor follow after them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things, and be rejected by this generation. 
And as it came to pass in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it came to pass in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But in the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. According to these things shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop, and his goods in the house, let him not go down to take them away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return to the things behind. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose it shall preserve it. I say unto you, in that night, Two men shall be on one bed, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding upon the same stone, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. And they answer and say unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Chapter 15 And he spake also a parable unto them on the necessity always to pray, and not to faint, saying, There was in a certain city a certain judge, which feared not God, and regarded not man. And there was a certain widow in that city, and she kept coming unto him, saying, Write me from my opponent at law. And he would not for a time, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, and regard not man, yet because this widow gives me trouble, I will write her, lest by her coming to the end she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the judge of unrighteousness saith. And shall not God perform the writing of his elect, which cry unto him day and night, though he be long-suffering over them? I say unto you that he will perform the writing of them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find the faith on the earth? And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous, and accounted nothing of the rest. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed thus, God, I thank thee that I am not as the rest of the men, extortioners, unrighteous, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I get. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up even his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be propitiated to me the sinner. I say unto you, this man went down to his house made righteous rather than that one. For every one that exalteth himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And they were bringing unto him also the infants, that he should touch them. For when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him, and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and hinder them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, shall in no wise enter into it. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, doing what shall I inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, even God the Father. Thou knowest the commandments. 
Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honour thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I observed from my youth up. But when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet one thing is lacking to thee. Sell all things, as many as thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But when he heard these things, he became exceeding sorrowful for he was very rich. When Jesus saw him becoming exceeding sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to enter through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And Peter said, Lo, we have left all, and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, or the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this time, and in the coming age, eternal life. And it came to pass, that as he came nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard a multitude passing by, he asked what this might be. And they told him, Jesus passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they that were going in front rebuked him, that he might be silent. But he cried out much the more, Thou, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still, and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight, and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Chapter 16 And Jesus entered, and passed through Jericho. And, behold, a man called, by name Zacchaeus. And he was a chief publican, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not from the multitude, because he was little in stature. And he ran before, and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass through that way. When he came to the place, Jesus looked up, and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste, and came down, and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, He has gone in to lodge with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood still, and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, Today is salvation come to this house. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. He said, therefore, A certain nobleman went into a distant country to receive for himself a kingdom, and to return. And he called his own ten servants, and gave them ten minas, and said unto them, Trade till I come. But his citizens hated him, and sent an embassy after him, saying, We do not wish this man to reign over us. And it came to pass, when he was returned, 
having received the kingdom, that he commanded these servants to be brought unto him, to whom he gave the money, that he might know what trade every man had accomplished. And the first came before him, saying, Lord, thy mina hath wrought ten minas more. And he said unto him, Well done, thou good servant, because thou wast faithful in a very little, be thou holding authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy mina hath made five minas. And he said also unto him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy mina, which I kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou sowest not. But he said unto him, Out of thy mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Knewest thou that I am an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I sowed not? Wherefore then gavest thou not my money into the bank, and I would have come and exacted it with interest? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the mina, and give it to him that hath the ten minas. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten minas. For I say unto you, that unto every one that hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even what he hath shall be taken away from him. For those mine enemies, that did not wish me to reign over them, bring hither, and slay them before me. And when he had thus spoken, he went before, going up to Jerusalem. And he was teaching daily in the temple. For the chief priests and the scribes, and the chief of the people, sought to destroy him. And they were not finding what they might do. For the people all hung upon him, listening. Chapter 17 And it came to pass, on one of those days, as he was teaching the people in the temple, and announcing the good tidings, there came upon him the chief priests, and the scribes, with the elders. And they spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? Or who is he that gave thee this authority? And he answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one word, and tell me, The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say, From heaven, he will say, Why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say, From men, all the people will stone us, for they are persuaded that John was a prophet. And they answered that they knew not whence it was. And Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. And the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him, and they feared the people. And they watched him and sent forth spies, feigning themselves to be righteous men, that they might take hold of his speech, in order to deliver him up to the rule and authority of the governor. And they asked him, saying, Teacher, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, and acceptest not a countenance, but of a truth teachest the way of God. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar, or not? But he perceived their craftiness, and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a denarius, whose image and superscription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things of Caesar, and unto God the things of God. They were not able to take hold of his saying before the people, and they marvelled at his answer, and were silent. And there came to him certain of the Sadducees, they which deny that there is a resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote unto us, that if any man's brother die, having a wife, 
and he die childless, his brother should take up the wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. There were, therefore, seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and died childless, and the second took the wife, and he died childless, and the third took her, and likewise the seven also left no children, and died, and last of all the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife of them does she become? For the seven had her as a wife. And Jesus answered and said unto them, The sons of this age marry, and are given in marriage. But they whom God accounted worthy of that age, to obtain the resurrection from the dead, neither marry, nor are given in marriage. For neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels, and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. And certain of the scribes answered and said, Teacher, thou hast well said, and they did not any longer venture to ask him anything. But he said unto them, How say they that the Christ is David's son? And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies the footstool of thy feet. David therefore calleth him Lord, and how is he then his son? And when all the people were hearing him, he said unto his disciples, Beware of the scribes, which desire to walk in long robes, and love salutations in the markets, and the first seats in the synagogues, and the first couches at the feasts, which eat up the houses of the widows, and for a pretext make long prayers, the same shall receive greater condemnation. Chapter 18 And he looked up, and saw the rich men that were casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two lepta. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, but this poor widow cast in more than they all. For all these did out of their superabundance cast in unto the offerings of God. But she, out of her want, cast in all the living that she had. And as some spake about the temple, that it was adorned with goodly stones and offerings, he said, As for these things which ye behold, the days will come, in which there shall not be left a stone upon a stone, that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Teacher, when then shall these things be? And what shall be the sign, when these things are going to take place? And he said, See that ye be not led astray. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is come near. Go ye not therefore after them. And when ye shall hear of wars and tumults, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, for the end is not immediately. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences and terrors and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, being brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. So it shall turn out to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all those opposed to you shall not be able to gainsay, nor withstand. And ye shall be delivered up even by parents, and brethren, and kinsfolk, and friends. And they shall put some of you to death. And ye shall be hated by all men for my name's sake. In your patience win your souls. 
But when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that her desolation is come near. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress upon the earth, and wrath unto this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led captive into all the nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by nations, until the times of nations be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in sun and moon and stars, and upon the earth distress of nations in perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men fainting for fear, and for expectation of the things which are coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they already shoot forth, ye see it, and know of your own selves that summer is already near. So likewise ye, when ye see these things coming to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is near. Verily I say unto you, the heaven and the earth shall in no wise pass away, till all things be accomplished. The heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my words shall in no wise pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be weighed down with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all that dwell on the face of all the earth. Watch ye therefore at every season, praying that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are going to take place. And every day he was teaching in the temple, and every night he went out, and lodged on the mountain that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. Chapter 19 Now the feast of the unleavened bread was coming near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how they might kill him for they feared the people. Then Judas, who was surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve, went away and communed with the chief priests and the captains how he might deliver him up unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he consented and was seeking an opportunity to betray him unto them without tumult. And the day of the unleavened bread came, on which the Passover must be sacrificed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make ready for us the Passover, that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where dost thou wish that we should make ready? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye have entered into the city, a man shall meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house whereinto he goeth. And ye shall say unto the master of the house, The teacher saith unto thee, Where is the lodging, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went, and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he lay down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And he received a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. 
This do for my remembrance. And in like manner, the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, even that which is poured out for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And the Son of Man indeed goeth, as it hath been determined. But woe unto that man through whom he is being betrayed. And they began to dispute with themselves which of them it was that was going to do this thing. And there was also a contention among them, which of them is accounted to be greater. And he said unto them, The kings of the nations have lordship over them, and they that have authority over them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is the greater among you, let him become as the younger, and he that leadeth as he that serveth. For whether is greater, he that reclineth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that reclineth? But I am in the midst of you as he that serveth. But ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you, even as my father appointed unto me, a kingdom. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded you that he might sift you as wheat. But I entreated for thee that thy faith may not fail. And thou, when once thou hast turned again, establish thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, with thee I am ready to go, both to prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow at all today, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he came out, and went, according to his custom, to the mountain of the olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray not to enter into temptation. And he was separated from them about a stone's throw, and he kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared unto him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And he became in an agony, and prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became, as it were, great drops of blood, falling down upon the ground. And when he rose up from the prayer, he came unto his disciples, and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, that ye may not enter into temptation. And while he was yet speaking, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, was coming before them, and came near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, with a kiss betrayest thou the Son of Man? And Jesus said unto the chief priests, and captains of the temple, and elders, which were come against him, Are ye come out as against a robber with swords and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched not forth your hands against me. But this is your hour, and the power of darkness. And they seized him, and led him, and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following afar off, when they had kindled the fire in the midst of the court, and had sat down together, Peter sat in the midst of them. And a certain maid, seeing him as he sat toward the light, looked steadfastly upon him, and said, This man also was with him. But he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another, seeing him, said, Thou art also one of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And after a space of about one hour, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. 
and immediately, while he was yet speaking, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And the men that held Jesus kept mocking and smiting him. And when they had blindfolded him, they kept striking him on the face, and asking him, saying, Prophesy, who is he that smote thee? And many other things they kept saying, railing against him. And as soon as it was day, the body of elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, was gathered together, and they led him away into their council, saying, If thou art the Christ, tell us. But he said unto them, If I tell you, ye will not at all believe. But if I also ask you, ye will not answer me, nor let me go. From henceforth shall the Son of Man be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And they all said, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say it, because I am. And they said, What further need have we of testimony? For we ourselves have heard from his mouth. Chapter 20 And the whole company of them arose, and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting the nation, and destroying the law and the prophets, and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, and turning away the women and children, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the multitudes, I find no fault in this man. And they were urgent, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, having begun from Galilee to this place. But when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And when he knew that he was from Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him up to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem in these days. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was of a long time desirous to see him, because he had heard many things about him, and was hoping to see some sign done by him. And he questioned him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and the scribes stood vehemently accusing him. And Herod, with his soldiers, set him at naught, and mocked him, and arraying him in a gorgeous robe, sent him back to Pilate. And Pilate and Herod became friends with each other that very day, for before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said unto them, He brought me this man as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I examined him before you, and found no fault in this man of what ye charge against him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death hath been done by him. I will therefore chastise and release him. Now he was under a necessity to release unto them at every feast one. But they cried out all together, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain insurrection made in the city, and for murder, had been cast into prison. Pilate therefore spake again to them, wishing to release Jesus. For they shouted, saying, Crucify, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath this man done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise and release him. For they were urgent with loud voices, asking that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that their request should be done. 
and released unto them him that for insurrection and murder had been cast into the prison, whom they were asking for. But Jesus he delivered up to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, that was coming from the country, and laid on him the cross, to bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of the people, and of women, who also were bewailing and lamenting him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For, behold, the days are coming, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that bear not, and the paps that gave not suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in the green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two others, malefactors, led with him to be put to death. When they came away unto the place, which is called the skull, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them scoffed at him, saying, Others he saved, let him save himself, if this is the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou art the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou art the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not even fear God, because thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we did receive things worthy of what we have done. But this man did nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me. And it was about the sixth hour, and a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the sanctuary was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he expired. And when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this man was righteous. And all the multitude that came together to this sight, when they beheld the things which were done, returned, smiting their breasts. And all his acquaintance, and the women that followed with him from Galilee, stood afar off, seeing these things. And behold, a man named Joseph, who was a counsellor, a good man and a righteous. He had not consented to their counsel and deed. A man of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that was hewn in stone, wherein no man had ever yet lain. And it was the day of the preparation, and the Sabbath was dawning. And the women also, which had come with him from Galilee, followed after, and beheld the tomb, and how his body was laid. And they returned, and prepared spices and ointments. Chapter 21 And on the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, 
they came unto the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and some others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, while they were perplexed about it, behold, two men stood by them in garments that flashed forth. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye him that liveth among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, That the Son of Man must be delivered up into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the tomb, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things unto the apostles. And their statement seemed in their sight as nonsense, and they disbelieved them. But Peter arose and ran unto the tomb, and, stooping down, he seeth the linen bandages laid by themselves, and departed, wondering to himself at that which was come to pass. And, behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, sixty stadia distant from Jerusalem. And they communed with each other about all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed and questioned together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what words are these that ye exchange with each other as ye walk, and are sad of countenance? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Dost thou alone sojourn in Jerusalem, and not know the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to a sentence of death and crucified him. For we hoped that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Yea, and besides all this, today is the third day since these things occurred. Yea, and certain women of our company astonished us, who had been early at the tomb. When they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And some of them, which were with us, went to the tomb, and found it so, even as the women had said. But him they saw not. And he said unto them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that he spake to you. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things, and to enter into his glory? And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they were going, and he made as though he would go further. And they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day has declined. And he went in to abide with them. And it came to pass, as he reclined at meat with them, he took the bread, and blessed it, and brake, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he became invisible to them. And they said, one to another, Was not our heart burning within us, while he talked to us in the way? And they rose up that very hour, and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they rehearsed the things that happened in the way, and how he became known to them in the breaking of the bread. And as they spake these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. For they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they beheld a phantom. And he said unto them, 
Why are ye troubled? And wherefore do reasonings arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that I am myself. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here anything eatable? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and ate it before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise again from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name unto all the nations. This has been the Gospel of the Lord by Marcion of Sinope, translated by James Hamlin Hill, narrated by Dennis Daly. The text used for this recording was published in 1891 and is in the public domain.